So a year ago, I made a video about Scooby-Doo games, and now it's my most viewed episode of Working Man Games. So I figured because there's still plenty of them I haven't reviewed yet, let's do it again. Now a lot has changed since I made that last episode. I have a better internet provider, which makes getting these games a little faster, and back then I had a crappy gaming laptop from 2016, so I couldn't emulate PS2 or PSP very well. But since then, I've built a PC, and now I can emulate damn near anything. Of course, I had to buy a GPU back when they were super expensive. That was a nice wallet drainer, but it's done. So now I can play the games I missed on the first review, starting with the Game Boy Advance games. Okay, my laptop wasn't that bad. I just didn't do the GBA games because I didn't want to, and now it's come back to haunt me in the form of an isometric adventure game. My God. God, why are there so many isometric games on the GBA? Did some company like make some easy to program engine? Oh, who's this guy? One of the developers? And what are these character sprites? They look like the characters from out of this world. So this game is based on the Scooby-Doo movie. So all the character portraits are the movie characters. Gotta make that movie tie-in game money. And who made it? THQ. First there was Ocean, then LJN, and then THQ. The holy trinity of bad movie game creators. So the game gives you missions, and it's all pick up this object, find this object, go here, go there, talk to this person. It's all very gripping and engaging. About as gripping as the grip you have on your dick while you're looking at E621 while listening to this video. That site ought to pay me for all the free advertisement I give them. So as you can imagine, there's this ghost haunting a hotel resort, and the gang has to figure out who it is. You can switch out characters, and they all have certain things that they can do. Like if you pick Velvet, you can solve puzzles and unlock stuff. You can play this puzzle to unlock treasure chests which all have money in them. And the time I played this game, I only ever needed the money once. But I'm guessing later in the game you start needing it more. I guess the game is teaching us we really don't need to be worried that much about money. Join my Patreon. Do it, it'll be funny. So while going through this swimming pool room, I notice there's like five or six swimming pools in this place. Like how many swimming pools do you need? Why not just have one big pool, not a whole bunch of little pools? Maybe it's so if too many people piss in the pool, we can all go to the other pool. I'm sorry, this pool thing bothers me. When we get to the basement, we encounter our first enemy in the game. Rats! Oh no, not rats! What are they gonna do, give me the plague? You can't fight them, so you have to sneak past them with the sneak mechanic. And then you got this one puzzle where the lights go off and you gotta hit all the switches to turn it back on. It's kinda like those ice puzzles in Undertale. Way to record your mouse cursor, by the way. These puzzles wouldn't be such a big deal if you didn't have to do them every five minutes. And then there was one of those pipe puzzles where you have to make the liquid flow through the pipe. How many games have this? And they boogered up the control controls for some reason. You would think you would press A to lay the pipe and it would give you another to place, but no, A and B rotate the pipe and you push select to deselect that pipe and place another one. This confused the shit out of me. You can't give my southern brain some shit like that and expect me to just roll with it. I'm already bad at these pipe puzzles and I was stuck on this for a while. Not because I suck at games, but, well, I suck at games, but that's beside the point. But yeah, it seemed like I would move two feet and I would have to solve one of these stupid puzzles again. I mean, the alternative isn't all that great anyway. I mean, I can do puzzles or I can run around an isometric GBA game. There's no winning here. Anyway, you find out somebody's misplaced their keys. You go to find the keys. You find Velma. You go get her glasses because she lost them again. Somebody said they saw the keys in the swimming pool. You find out you got to drain the swimming pool to get the keys. You go to the basement, drain the swimming pool, do the puzzle. Don't get hit by the rats. Go back to the first floor. Talk to the woman. Get the keys. Give the keys back to the person that needs him. You ask a guy for info. He wants money. You give him the money. He gives you the info. He says you need a pass to go in the electrical room. You go to the hotel owner to get the pass. He says he's missing some blueprints. You go to the electrical room to find the blueprints. You talk to a wrestler that's got dirt on his clothes. Velma thinks that's suspicious. You find the blueprints. You find out how somebody's been playing with the lights. You find a guy that takes pictures of ghosts. He says he's missing his camera. You go and find the camera. You find all the clues and then Velma says it's time to catch the ghost. You look for the ghost in the locked room. You have to do another damn puzzle. You go through the hallway. You gotta do the puzzle again. You go to the room where the ghost is. You have to do the puzzle again a third time. Fade out, fade in. You caught the ghost and it's the wrestler guy. <sighs> Yeah, this game is something else, all right, but that something else ain't much good. I think I would have more fun playing Elden Ring, and I hate Elden Ring. Well, they made a second movie, so they had to make a second movie game. Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed on the GBA. Well, this one's a platformer, and honestly... It didn't make me gag. I mean, it's not gonna win any awards, but I've played worse. 
for a licensed GBA game, this could have been way worse than it was. They gave Movie Daphne a sword, and you use it to chop up rats. Oh no, not rats. I promise I'm not gonna make that a catchphrase. Between each level, it tells you what happened in the movie, so you'll know what part you're theoretically in. And this game doesn't save, it has a password system. I guess a battery save would have costed too much money for this budget game. The boss battles are interesting in that even though the boss has a life bar, it's also got a number beside it which tells you how many hits it can take. Something else weird too, Scooby has an attack and it's running. But no, not the running you use for movement. You press B and you do a different run cycle and that's your attack. So you've got two different types of running? Attack running and running running? And when you hit the button, it takes a moment for it to work, so sometimes it doesn't work. However, to run run, you have to tap the control pad twice, which at first doesn't seem like a weird thing because a lot of the Kirby games do that. However, there's some jumps you have to do that you have to run and jump at the same time or you're not gonna make it. And they give you a gnat's ass hair worth of room to do that. It doesn't feel good when I have to prepare for each jump. At one point, this game randomly started throwing quick time events at me. I gotta press all these buttons to kill the Black Knight and you can't do it all in one go. You have to keep hitting him and knocking him out. Then it threw a level at me where I have to follow this old man without him seeing me. And it's basically that stage in Metal Gear 2 on the MSX where you have to follow the soldier. And it's about as fun. I hated this part. <laughs> at least they try to break it up and liven it up some by giving you obstacles and stuff. But then they pull this shit where there's doors that close and you won't make it unless you're directly right behind him. If I had to sum it up, I'd say this isn't a terrible game. I've played way worse. But this isn't something I would choose to play at any moment. But then there's Scooby doing the cyber chase on GBA. This is the real deal. This is garbage. I mean, just listen to it. like a MIDI from an Angel Fire website. So you have this hub world where you have to pick up CDs so you can go to a level. The CDs are in plain sight, there's no enemies to fight, and it's just a completely straight room. And there's only three of them. And in one of them, as far as I know, the CD never spawns. What is even the point? The first level is on a jet ski, and you have to collect a certain number of Scooby Snacks and then get to the goal. The perspective's kind of confusing, kind of hard to tell how far or how close the Scooby Snacks are at. But it's not hard or anything. But man, it bores me to tears just looking at it. One thing you don't want to do is go to the level select without collecting any CDs because you can't exit back out of it. You gotta play a level. So you gotta play a level that you've already done. So I had to do the jet ski level twice. How hard would it have been to just program the B button to exit you back out of the level select? Also, I apparently have three Deadpools. The second level is a whole lot of nothing too. You just collect all the Scooby Snacks and then you go to the goal. And the level is basically as basic gets. There's no jumps, there's no platforms, there's no really anything to do but walk left or walk right and throw stuff at the monsters. This level feels like a game somebody made as a college assignment. And then there's the fight with the creeper, which, oh my god. You have to set off these catapults with slime on them. Okay, first off, slime. What is this, Nickelodeon? Anyway, the throwing angle of these freaking catapults is little to nothing. The boss almost needs to be standing on top top of it before it'll actually hit him. What kind of slime is it anyway? Is it that jiggly gelatin kind of slime or is that runny diarrhea slime? Alright, next level, snow chase. Wait a minute, this is the same thing as the jet ski level, it's just a snowmobile now. What kind of copy paste crap is this? Next level, and oh it's the caveman! And I froze him in there. I guess they felt bad about making the levels really short and small, so they overcompensated like hell on this one. This level is gigantic! And you have to find almost 150 Scooby Snacks to get to the goal. All the while, I'm jumping on these trees and taking leaps of faith, moving around on platforms. I feel like I'm a monkey fucking a football here. And I finally did find enough Scooby Snacks to get to the goal. But guys, I have no earthly idea where the goal is. I ran around in this damn level for half an hour, and I still never found the stupid goal. I gotta end the review about this one right here because I don't know where to go. But it's not like the game was going to get any better. Don't kid yourself. It wasn't. Then there's Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem on the GBA. 
Oh god, it's hitting the wrong notes. Wait, didn't I already play a game called Mystery Mayhem? Yeah, it's the one with that bad minecart level. So they apparently made two of them. Well, at least this one sticks to one genre. It's a platformer. But I'll be the first to tell you these levels make no sense. They're all set up like this big elaborate maze. Like who designed this building with all these platforms and stairs that go to nowhere and bookshelves just in random spots? It's like when a level designer makes a house, like that damn Winchester house. This game has a Metroidvania thing going on in that it's all one big level and you unlock doors and secret passages to get to new places, but it's not the best example of one I've ever seen, no. The map makes absolutely no sense at all. You would think an AI generated these levels. The ghosts will hurt you unless you sneak past them, but normally there's a health pickup right there close to them, so it's actually faster to take the hit and get the health. I don't have very much to say about this game because I couldn't get very far. I had to find keys to open up doors and I never could find any of them keys. So I just ran around like a chicken with my head cut off. Two out of ten. Two for too damn confusing. Scooby-Doo Unmasked on the GBA. Now I played a game called Scooby-Doo Unmasked on the Xbox and I liked that game. And you know what? This game is good. It's real good. The levels are well laid out. The controls feel good. The graphics aren't terrible for GBA. This is all right. So basically they took the console game and made a 16-bit platformer out of it. And they did a good job at it. The costume mechanic from the other game is in here. And you get new moves and you can open new areas with it. Spiders, punch them! Sometimes in the levels you need to find a clue and the game will tell you when it's close by. And you need to find that clue. If you don't, you're playing the whole level all over again just to get it. And you really don't want to do that because for some reason, the levels are long in this game. I mean, they're really long. I mean, I don't mind because the game's good, but you'll go through section after section of the stage wondering, good lord, when does it end? You want a good example of how long this game is? Okay, I passed level two and I looked at my recorder and I'd already been recording an hour. The game throws you puzzles every now and again, and it's mostly just destroy the crate so you can move this crate. After you get through the levels, you have to go to Velma, and when you do, you have to select which clues you found are relevant to the case. After that, I had to play this level level where I had to find trap pieces to help build Fred's trap. Now what do you think that level entails doing? Did you say riding on a Mode 7 roller coaster? Yeah, this is like the minecart level in Super Mario RPG, but it's backwards. You have to avoid broken track and you have to jump onto other pieces of track and stuff like that. And this is way better than the minecart level in Mystery Mayhem. I didn't mind this level at all. Then you solve a puzzle for Fred using button combinations. Then it's boss time. The boss wasn't too hard either. You just had to punch the dragon in the face until he died. Dragons, punch him! Okay, I'll stop. That's not even my joke. Overall, good game! I was really surprised how good this was. So after you play Scooby-Doo Unmasked on console, go check out the handheld one. Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers on the Game Boy Color. I had this one as a kid and I beat it. It's not a bad game either. Mr. Hyde is stealing all the jewels. So the gang goes to Dr. Jekyll's house. So this game is kind of like a point-and-click game, but you don't don't do any pointing and clicking. When you get close to something you can interact with, you just press A to interact with it. You can play any character you want, and you need certain characters to do certain things. What's nice is you have a shared inventory between all of them. This game does not hold your hand, neither. It is really easy to get stuck and not know what you're supposed to do. Sometimes what you're supposed to do is just sit there and wait. A good example of what this game does to you is you need to be playing a specific character standing in a specific spot when the clock strikes 12. Only then will that cutscene happen. It really gets that cryptic. This game also has doors that are locked, but they're only locked for a specific amount of time. After you beat one of the chapters, the doors unlock. You don't need a key or anything. They just magically unlock. Trust me, if you don't have a walkthrough for this game, you're gonna be stuck. There's a lot of busy work in this game, too. Like, there's a part where you gotta keep putting suds in a washing machine to overflow it so the maid will have to leave her room to clean it up. Then you're supposed to steal something from her room. But after a while, she cleans it up and comes back. Then there's the light fixture puzzle. Ooh, let me tell you about the light fixture puzzle. So you have to get a stool with a missing leg and a sausage. You take the sausage and put it in the instant freezer and use the sausage as a leg for the stool. Then you use the stool to open up the light fixture and use it again to grab the light. 
Now, the game is coded so you have to remove every light fixture in this hallway before the last one finally gives you a fluorescent light to take. And every time you grab a light bulb, the sausage thaws out. So you have to go back to the freezer, freeze the sausage again, go back to a light fixture you haven't opened yet, and do this shit all over again. This really feels like they did this to pad out the game and make it longer, and it's the worst part of the game. Then there's this room with the doors that take you to the other doors. They're all connected together, but one door will take you to a secret room. Now you're supposed to go to somebody who's in the mansion that knows the pattern of the doors, but the pattern of the doors keeps changing, so it's actually faster for you to just kind of brute force it. All in all, it's not a bad game. It's just really hard to figure out without a walkthrough. But if you know how to play it, it's actually a pretty short game. You can get it done in less than an hour if you know how to play. So now we're getting to the 3D games, and now we're getting to the games that I wasn't able to review before. Well, here they are, starting with Scooby-Doo, Who's Watching Who on the PSP. A who's watching who, who's being true, and who don't even care anymore. It's a country song, don't worry about it. Now the cutscenes still have this weird audio glitch going on, but for the most part, this game works. So basically the story is there's this rival paranormal investigation team that's a parody of CSI, and the gang are joining them in a TV show, and they have to solve the mystery before they do. Scooby helps us solve mysteries. A talking mystery solving dog could be a TV series. It is. It's called Goober and the Ghost Chasers. So the first thing that happens to me in this game is I get attacked by rats. Oh no, not rats. If I keep saying it over and over, eventually it's still not going to get any funnier. So the game gives you a hub world and three stages to go on. And before you can go to the stages, you got to collect enough Scooby Snacks to unlock them. The main goal is to collect clues, and there's a lot of clues you got to collect, and you just about have to collect all of them. There's three Three different types of stages. What you're seeing right now is the chase stage, where you have to run away from the monster. But the whole time, you need to be looking for the clues. If you miss one, you'll have to go back to the stage and get it later. But yeah, this is basically an obstacle course where you just keep going forward. It makes me think of Crash Bandicoot for some odd reason. Tana is goaded, by the way. Still can't hold a candle to Dixie, though. Then there's the driving stages. Yeah, driving stages in a Scooby-Doo game. When this game turned into Driver San Francisco. You know what? This needs driver music. <laughs> So in this driving stage, you chase after somebody and you try to pick up clues along the way. At the end, it tells you to ram them. I'm gonna ram them. And that's pretty much it for these stages. These stages in these games are pretty cut and dry. I can explain them in like 20 seconds. After you gather the clues, you give them to Velma and then you have to play little mini games because content. To accuse a suspect, you have to get six clues that are relevant to them, and some clues are relevant to more than one person, so it's up to you who to pin those clues on. But you still have to get three clues that are unique to one person. So that's three unique to one person, three that works on multiple people. You see why I say you might as well get every single clue. The third type of stage is a platforming stage. You run around looking for clues and getting your ass beat up by ghosts. The platforming stages are the most fun ones, and it makes you wonder why they didn't just make the whole game the platforming stages. Once you get a row of six clues, it's time to trap the ghost. And you go to this stage, which is insultingly easy. You just press a button when they get on the mark and you do it three times. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the whole game. It's just the same thing all over again when you go to a new level. Collect tokens, platform stage, driving stage, chase stage, trap stage, rinse, repeat. The game's not bad. It just feels very copy-pasted. But for a PS SP game, it's all right. Next, we have Scooby-Doo and the Spooky Swamp on PlayStation 2. So in this game, you play two characters at once, and you can apparently play two-player co-op. And each character has got special things in the world that only they can interact with. Man, this really reminds me of the Simpsons game. It's got a lot of those same features. Are Scooby and Shaggy gonna munch on some steamed hams? So they find this voodoo lady that says she'll cook them something if they can find the ingredients for her. And as it turns out, the one they need first is somewhere where the gang was going anyway. Well, sure you can. Come take a ride to El Muncho in the Mystery Machine. Why does the audio sound so bad? It's PS2. Sounds like one of those Duke Nukem shit posts. Scooby Dooby Doo. And your mom makes two. 
So in my old video, I mentioned that one of the games I reviewed reminded me a lot of Devil May Cry, and we're gonna look at that one in a minute. But that game and this one seem to share the same engine and a lot of the same controls. This game's a little bit of everything. It's a beat-em-up, it's a platformer, it's got puzzles to solve. There's a lot going on in this game. But the best way I can describe this game is there's a little bit of everything, but a whole lot of nothing. There's a lot of instances where you're just kind of running from A to B with no enemies to fight or anything interesting going on, and the levels feel feel kind of empty at times. There's a collect-a-thon element in this game and that there's a bunch of extra things for you to pick up or do, like take pictures of ghosts or collect tokens from fallen enemies. You don't actually have to do any of this though, it's just for extra content. There's a lot of backtracking and going back to the same places you've already been before, which is the literal definition of backtracking. I'm, I'm tired, guys. But anyway, you'll be coming back to the same old locations over and over again in some cases. Sometimes the graphics take a a deep dive. Like, look at this guy's textures. Look how pixelated he is. PS2 games look better than this. That and the bad quality audio, I... I wonder. This game was also released on the DS. Could it be possible that they made the DS game first and then just converted it to PS2? That's like making a game on the PS1 and then putting it on the GameCube and not updating the graphics or anything, just straight up porting it. Yep, that was a thing. These enemies are annoying. They're like brides with dynamite bouquets? Whatever, game. Here's kind of an aggravating puzzle. You have to move these boxes around so you can move this pole. Pole. Pole, so Jaff. Javni? What is wrong with me today? Move the pole so Daphne can climb up it and jump off of it. Uh, let me try that again. Go up, go up, 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 up. Now jump and go. I'm not doing this on purpose, I swear. Okay, climb up, jump up, grab the MacGuffin. Now, we didn't fall off this time. <clears throat> the controls don't feel good in this game at all. The jump mechanic feels stiff and your character floats suspended for a while when you jump all the way up. And the attack button feels like it doesn't want to work sometimes. Feels like your attacks aren't hitting when they clearly should be. This shit happened though and it made me laugh. I stood on top of this table and this one enemy just keeps circling around me. Look at him go. Poor guy, he's trying his best. I don't know, this game feels pretty unremarkable altogether. I'm struggling to even find things to say about it. It's like when your parents ask you, what did you do today? And you say, oh, nothing. What are you gonna tell them? I jerked off and played video games all day? When there's not much to say, there's just not much to say. I could say we play Simon to hack terminals, but who cares? And that's how I feel about this game. Who cares? I did at least go up to the first boss and that felt kind of underwhelming too. I mean, most of the time, in your game is spent backtracking and pressing the same two buttons over and over again. The jump button and the attack button. And there's no really cool attacks, really. There's a charge attack that doesn't really work all that great. And then there's just your regular attack. The most I can say about this game is it's and game. That's my review. Last game, and we're doing a game I already did. Scooby-Doo First Frights on the PS2. Reason we're doing it again is because I could only get so far because I couldn't emulate PS2 very well, but now I can, so let's do it again. Both this game and the last game had a weird art style that I didn't know what to think of. It's not the worst Scooby art style I've ever seen. All these models have this uncanny dead look inside their eyes. Okay, I instantly like this game a lot better. There's something different about the controls. They feel a little bit more tight and fluid. I don't know what the fuck that means. I just know the controls feel better somehow. This is the game I said felt like Devil May Cry. I swear, if they put a score and a ranking system every time you fought bad guys, this would be the shit. I put Scooby-Doo and DMC5 into the AI art generator, and I got this. This looks badass. I think we have a thumbnail. The levels in general just feel better to play. There's a lot more emphasis on the beat-em-up part of the game, and I think it helps the gameplay immensely. This game is teetering on the edge of good. Also, interesting thing, there's a character in this game that's voiced by Cam Clark, Liquid Snake himself. Fred Jones, the star quarterback. Your spectacular pass really stole the game away from us, son. You enjoy all the killing. 
Pardon? Sometimes you'll unlock a secret costume for one of the characters and they'll wear it for the rest of the level. And you get different attacks with it too, like Fred can now throw footballs. Sometimes the action stops for a little bit and you have to look around for clues in the environment. And it took me a while to realize this, but a lot of them are hidden in breakable objects. So I ran around clueless until I looked up a walkthrough, but after I did I was like, well no shit Sherlock, they're hidden. Sometimes the enemies will just sit there and not do anything. Will they fall asleep? I'm gonna do that after this video. So when you don't have beat em up arenas, you got some really nice platforming levels. So the game does throw you a little bit of variety. But the best part of this game is the first boss. He fucking sings. Well now look, here you are, and how lucky you're the stars. But it just might not end so well for you. Could you be that mystery crew? You know I'll see my best through. What I'm saying is no talent show for you. But I don't know why they even put it on that day. You know what I say. Come now, skulls. That's your cue. What you can do. This is hilarious. I love this. You want to hear the best part? When you hit him, he sings ow. Oh. <laughs> this is amazing. This is Cam Clark at his finest right here. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Ah, obligatory sewer level, I see. Oh my god, that's horrifying. Nothing Dante Doobie Doo can't handle, though. Not only are those dolls creepy, they make some fucked up noises. Ugh, I don't like that. I already don't like dolls or mannequins or anything like that. They don't have a soul! Oh, look, it's battle tanks. Oh my god, what is Velma wearing? Is that some kind of sumo wrestler fat suit? I don't know what to think about that. Nothing good. One odd thing I noticed is sometimes the idle sounds of the enemies will still play even though you're far away from them, but it acts like it's right there. It would have to be the doll, wouldn't it? Ugh. Anyway, that's about all I got for this game. It's not bad. It's nothing special, but it's still not bad. I would play it. And with that, I've reviewed every Scooby-Doo game. Well, except those PC ones, but they're really hard to get working on a modern computer, so I'm not gonna bother. So after playing every Scooby-Doo game, I have made up a top five. These are the good Scooby-Doo games. Number five, Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers on Game Boy Color. Number four, Scooby-Doo First Frights on PS2. Number three, Scooby-Doo Unmasked on Game Boy Advance. Number two, Scooby-Doo Unmasked on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. And the number one is Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. The runner-up would be Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo on the Amiga because it's the only Scooby game, the only game in the world where you can play as Scrappy-Doo. And that makes it awesome. Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Speaking of Amigas, I just bought one. Does that mean another? Another Amiga episode? Uh, don't hold your breath, but maybe. But now I sleep. This is Working Man Games. I'm Stuart K. Riley. See y'all. Scooby, 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 where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby, 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 where are you? We need some help from you now.